In this video I'm going to take another look at the GP7 and the PMK respirators, the two Soviet uh, masks right near the end of the Cold War that um, I personally really don't like. But what I'm going to do is maybe I can find some features I like about them in this video because lots of people keep telling me to look at them again and give them another chance. Now my main issue of these, so I'll start with the PMK and I'll try not to knock all this stuff flying because I've got it precariously balanced. This is the PMK. Looks cool. So what's on this? It's got your speech diaphragm here, it's got a drinking tube, you've got an exhale valve that you can twist around so you can angle it. Although mine, yeah there we go. You can screw that on, have it in whichever direction you want. Um, but it has a very weird inner face system for the mask, so you'll notice no oral nasal cup. You've kind of got the bit where the nose is that acts a bit like one, but not very well. Um, so the issue is, it's got this very floppy sort of inner face seal, um, which maybe you're meant to cut it to size, maybe that's the problem, I don't know, but it doesn't fit me particularly well. And again, I can't complain if it's designed for a Slavic face and I don't have a Slavic face shape because I'm not Slavic, then, you know, I can't fault that with the mask because some people have said that and that is a good point. The issue is I don't have that problem with any of the other Soviet masks or Warsaw Pact masks for that, you know, instance. This is one that seems odd they couldn't put an inner sort of mask on it properly because the, um, for example, PBF, the cheek filter mask, despite it being cheek filters, at least has a proper rural nasal cup in that. This one doesn't. Um, you know, and then you look at the GP7, uh, exact same problem. The only real difference with the regular GP7 PMK is the GP7 has no drinking tube, but fundamentally from the inside they are exactly the same mask. Um, there's the GP7V which has a drinking tube. Uh, both these masks, as like I said, look cool. Um, I really like the GP7 with the big circular eyes, but um, the issue is they don't work particularly well. Now, the other issue of these masks um, is the quality control on them. Now, these are late Soviet Union masks, which means because it's late Soviet Union, all the workers in the factories had stopped caring at this point, um, and the masks were very poor quality. Late Soviet Union, very early Russian Federation, the quality control is generally awful on stuff. So, um, for example, my PMK is from 86, so again, late Soviet Union, only a couple of years before everything started going wrong. Is there a date on... Oh yeah, this is why this one's awful. 90. So, 1990, I think it was 91, wasn't it, the Soviet Union collapsed, so no wonder this one has a lot of problems. Okay, so let me start off with um, the PMK one. Now, I'm going to actually put the filter on. Uh, these probably do contain asbestos. Looking at the particle layer, it looks the exact same thing as in the GP5 filter. This does actually have an extra particulate layer that's not cotton wool on the top that looks much better quality. So for the sake of this video, I'm going to briefly use this filter. Um, what is interesting is you'll notice on the proper GP7 kind of PMK filters, you've got this ridge around here. That connects to the ridge there, which is sort of interesting. So when I start screwing it in... It sort of makes a seal, not a proper one, but with that... Uh, I'm not going to bother using the filter sock or any of the other accessories, but I'm going to hopefully demonstrate to you why I don't like this one. Let's screw it up show it. Hopefully I don't have to undo the straps to get this on. Because these straps are a nightmare to deal with. But there we go. Okay, so it's sort of on my head now. The issue being that, as I said, with that peripheral seal, it doesn't sit very well. Also, the mask's too squishy in my opinion. It doesn't hold its shape. Oh, to be fair on it, it's not fogging up too fast today, because it seems my nose is sitting in its little indent properly. However, what I really don't like with this mask is, when you draw air in, the air directly hits you in the eye, which is a horrible feature. I absolutely hate masks that have that. So let's get this thing off. So, yeah. Where the Tissot system runs, the Tissot system runs under this eye for whatever reason. It doesn't come in... There's a bit which makes it look like it. I think the air from it basically somehow comes blown in there and then it reflects up there somehow. I'm not sure exactly how they did the system in this mask. The point is it's a horrible system because when the air blows in your eye, that's really distracting. Um, it, you know, it makes you physically want to close your eye because it feels like something's touching your eye. It's only air, but that's a horrible system. I could not concentrate properly with a mask like that on because every time you inhale, you're aware that it's tickling your eye in a sense. So, 
Now let's try the GP7. This is a bit lighter because it's not got the drinking tube. Out of the two, I prefer the GP7, but not by much. But my GP7 has a horrible quality control issue on it, and it's the filter port. When I've tested this before, I was never able to get a filter to make an airtight seal of the mask. The reason being that because they were so lazy at the factory the day they did it, the filter grooves weren't cut properly, so it, I couldn't get filters to work on it. It may be the actual Soviet filters work exactly and normalised filters don't, but anyway, let's get this on and I'll tighten the straps. And of course I need to pull it down because it's a Soviet mask, even... Now you see in this one, there's even less of one of those oral ridges, or nasal ridge type things. So it's already fogging up, uh, despite this being tighter on my face than the other mask. I can see if I can get the straps a bit tighter, but these are very bad to adjust straps as well. So, yeah, let's get these straps here tightened a bit, because these are the ones that could probably do with a tighten. Uh, I can't even do it with the mask on, which is a bad sign. That might actually be pressurising, but we will test this quickly. This isn't comfortable in my face, as you can probably see. So, the filter is still working against banana oil, at least. Let's just try. The voice I from well the mask actually does seem to be airtight so perhaps it just doesn't like normalized filters on the thread they did so let's get that off see this is horribly tight despite the fact that I've not done the straps up what size of PMK sorry GP7 is uh, this is a size one now this could be the problem with some like faults of this but yeah it's still got that nasal cup sort of thing inside, yet it doesn't fit well for me. Maybe if I can get a size 2 or a size 3. What size is this one? This is a size 2, so maybe I should try and see at some point if I can get a GP7 in size 3. But the problem is, it's not got a proper oral nasal cup. Now, the thing I like more with the GP7 is the air doesn't seem to hit me in the eye on this mask. I don't know why, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So I'm assuming this mask is just simply too small for me. Whereas this one is um, an alright size, it's just that silly design. Now, with this one, I'm sort of tempted to see... What I'm going to just do quickly is stop the video, see if I can adjust the straps to get it more comfortable and see if that stops the air blowing horribly into my eye. But these aren't easy to adjust straps. And you know, this is why I like the Soviet hood masks, because or helmet masks, because they didn't have these horrible strap issues that you get with cheap rubber straps. Okay, so maybe this still isn't the right size for me, however, by tightening some of the straps, I've no longer got it blowing onto my eye. The issue being, you can't quickly adjust this mask while you're wearing it. So, this is not comfortable at all due to how tight that is, maybe you can see but at least it's not blowing into that eye. Now, again, this is probably not a great size for me. Maybe I actually need a size 3 one of these masks. Who knows? But, yeah, I'm not a fan. So, this is just so difficult to get off and on. Yeah. The Russians were really better, at least during this period, when they stuck to the helmet-style masks. So, yes, these look good, but I really don't like them. And again, some of this could be because they don't fit my face well, or I don't have the right sizes. But the straps are really difficult to adjust. Whenever I'm adjusting them, I think I'm going to snap the buckle, because they've got these plastic buckles. But, you know, these straps you have to pull through with loads and loads of force. And, um, yeah, they've got these very flabby bits here. Uh, so when I had it on the tightness that was comfortable, the air kept blowing into my eye. So, no. And again, as I said, the quality control is awful on these because these were made at the end of the Soviet Union or early Russian Federation when there was no quality control on anything. So, if you can spot one cheap and you think it looks a cool mask and you want it for that reason, the PMK or GP7's a nice mask for that, I guess. They look cool and as, um, you know, people have asked me before, this was a mask they used in the remake of My Bloody Valentine, uh, the Harry Warden mask. I think they had a hose attached to it, didn't they, or something in that, but I haven't actually seen the remake, I've only seen the original, but I've looked at the posters and screenshots. 
Um, so yeah, that's this mask, but yeah, it's really not a comfortable mask. It doesn't work as it should work. So despite it looking cool, you know, I really can't recommend these. And you know, no matter how many times I've tried to use them and re-like them a bit like the GSR, I just can't find many merits to these masks, especially when the Soviets had things like the SHMS, you know, even things like the GP5. The GP5 is faster to take on and take off, it's actually more comfortable than these, and I think you even get a better field of view. So, yeah, I definitely prefer a GP5M or PMG2 to this mask, because they both have speech diaphragms. Speech diaphragm, I think, is marginally better on these masks, but it's fundamentally quite similar technology. Uh, so yeah, not much I can really say about these that's positive. Maybe you'll get lucky and buy one that fits you exactly and the quality control on it's good, but for the most part these masks aren't great, and as I said I wouldn't trust the filters really either.